G'day, welcome to Property Insights. My guest today is Alexander Phillips. I know him quite well. Um, I assume having coffee just about every day of the week. Um, he's been on the show a few times. He's from PPD Real Estate. Look, he's sort of a bit of a ledge when it comes to, uh, you know, this record and that record and most sales of everything in around <laughs> Australia. <laughs> he's, he kicks a ball out of the park all the time. I know he's a, a freak when it comes to um, um, eth ethic, work ethic, and uh, the amount of hours he spends doing what he does. But I'm here to talk to him about the current property market. There's lots of discussion going on there, mate. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks for having, having um, me again. It's good look, to be here. It's uh, it's a weirdest thing. Like I can't get my hand on what's mm. going on out there. Like I mean, if 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 I'm talking about your personal average, which is quite expensive property, mm. that's one market. But yeah. your business is average, where you sell lower down the yeah, yeah. the range. Maybe that's going to get effective. What are you seeing out there? I probably, mean, probably as an example, over the weekend uh, we had uh, open houses from eight hundred thousand up to fifteen million. Uh, every open house was probably about thirty percent higher of attendees than what we were expecting at all ends of the market. But both ends, yeah, including eight hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think what what traditionally what what I believe what happens when the market softens, which it did from say started softening about October twenty one. Um, those pre those people that only want to sell to get a premium price don't sell, which are traditionally downsizers or people that have been sitting around for a while. They go, I'll just wait for the next you know, uptick. So that that in itself probably wiped off thirty percent of the stock. So the might so not, they've withdrawn. Oh, they're just not selling any. Or they've decided I don't want to sell. So the, the stock levels are thirty percent lower than what they probably should be. Um, with with higher interest rates, uh, we've seen a lot of buyers coming out thinking they've got the upper hand because. You know the, the the market's coming off and whatnot, but then have come to open houses and seen twenty other people in that sort of bamboozled them. They're a bit freaked out about actually what's happening out there. So it is you know the, the numbers are higher mainly because it's probably a buyer thinking it's a buyer's market and there's less sellers out there. But then they go to, you know for an auction or buy property and they're competing against you know, a pool of probably still an average of three bidders. I would say at an auction. Wow. So it's not. It feels probably like it's stronger than what it is, but it's about normal, I would say. Um, so you were, we're expecting you know that to play out you know pretty consistent over the next couple of months. It's more so what happens with all these people rolling off from going straight from two percent to six percent. Yeah. Uh, with if they've got big mortgages, higher cost of living, how much? What 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 that actually does is get more property on the market because they need to sell. So and that person needs to sell sells for a lower price and the whole market resets. So that's sort of what we might expect to see happen later in the year. Could be another slight correction, I think. So you you get um um yeah I mean you, you hear around town um that uh, someone bought a property. I presume you hear that someone bought a property, borrowed money two percent, now paying six percent or about to pay six percent. They might have to sell their property. I mean, is that a thing that you hear about? Um, yeah, well, I look at, you know, you look at, say, average incomes. You look at, let's say, you know, I've been speaking to a lot of, you know, even CEOs of, of the major banks because we're, you know, just just coming across them. And so in the eastern suburbs, the last four or five years, they were saying on an average, most people sort of borrowed, if you bought a house for $5 million, borrowed two, two to three mil. So they're sort of going from 60 grand up to 180 overnight when they roll over so where do they find that extra 120 grand they're not probably commission after tax dollars yeah and they're not commission based like i am or whatever you're not all the own businesses so they they've got to find that somehow maybe they've got it in savings or they're eating into their savings but i do think at some point that's got to have an effect on the market so, so, so i think what you're saying then alex is that ultimately the thing that reduces the price of residential property is supply so we've got to look at the thing that creates supply and you're suggesting what might create supply is when those this so-called fixed rate mortgage cliff yeah comes about yeah i mean it's not really here yet because i i think no, i think we're lagged i think we're six yeah, months behind it correct you know, and I, I just think for the purposes of everyone listening that the first time that that two percent well, 1.99 and everyone, fixed rate. Everyone refinanced at that point, really. Totally. You? Yeah. yeah. So, so the but the very first time it was offered was one March three years ago. Um, so, and the reason why that happened one March three years ago was because 
the Reserve Bank introduced this thing called Term Funding Facility for the banks. And they gave the banks $188 billion to lend as a fixed rate at 0.1% on the 1st of March 2019. Uh, no, 2020, I should say. And how long do fixed rates last for? Three years. Yeah. So, so then they're, they're now rolling off no, now. The banks now have to pay it back. Yeah, yeah. So, so but, you're but right. But that comes to the consumer then. Yeah, and, then consu- yeah. Yeah, and so. now the consumer has to pay it back. Yeah. So the, the first fixed rate loans at 2% were first handed out in 2020, March 2020. And, and how long do they last for? Three years maximum. But how long did that put 2% period? No, I went up, sorry, so, so that, you got it from first? Went, went up to the end of last year. Yeah. So it, start, it, it stopped last yeah. year so those people are going to start rolling out now so you're right i mean th- those fixed rate people mm. are just starting to come out into variable rate yeah. as of the first of march yeah it can only have, it, it never started before the first march so the very first one's the first march 2020 they're now starting you now and so it took a long time for this really low fixed rate thing to catch on yeah. i mean and as you you rightly said a lot of people when um a lot of people went and fixed their rates, so they might have. So even though it's gone up to six, they're still on two happy yeah. days. So what we're seeing is like we had an open house on the weekend in Clovelly. There's one house on the market in Clovelly, a guide price of two eight. We had sixty three groups look at it. Wow, which is triple what we would normally get. But if there was five of those on the market, divide that by five. So all you need is right, and then uh. that, then you know so. You know, you, you you get one of those people that goes on the market, and then they take two six because they've got to take it. Um, you know, then that resets the market. Yeah, so, no, that makes sense because so, so what you're saying the in addition to all this, in addition to this mortgage cliff happening uh, over time, starting from one March this year, calendar year. Mm. Um, in addition to one of the other things that exists is there's been a shortage of properties for sale. Exactly. Yeah. Because people could afford to hang on because the fixed rate hadn't turned into variable exactly. rate. So they're and now they're all. Yeah. Now, and how much of these? How many of these people are sort of sitting back, have been sitting back saying, "Well, we." We think if we hang on, like just hang on really tight, the market's going to come back. And I think they're so used to – like the problem is with Sydney and oh, like I've been doing it now for 22 years and everyone's saying it's going to come off 20%. It's never happened. It probably won't. But it's always, it's always going up. So they always probably think something's going to happen. Might be a government incentive, or uh, you know, you know, rates are going to go down. Like, so I do think they'll probably hang on to the end. But generally, the end is a bit too late. So they're probably they're not selling because the banks like forcing them probably probably close, but their mentality is, well, let's quickly get out. And that, when they quickly get out, generally they'll take a lower price. So that 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 we believe could happen. Then you then you got the spring market when the stock levels double, then you got that coinciding with a bit of a mortgage cliff. That's a good time to be buying, not selling. That's interesting. Yeah. So you're, you're, that's a good point. Probably Alex. last quarter of this year is where we'll see that happen. Which that, always, that's yeah. a very interesting point you make because I seem to remember a long, long time ago that the, I don't even know if it exists there today, but the Wentworth Courier in the area I live, which is like the- The Bible. The Bible, Bible where everything yeah. gets- back then it was, yeah. It was then. It's probably realestate.com or yeah, domain yeah, or something yeah. now, but um, the Wentworth Courier was a, it was a magazine distributed in the local area, which basically was full of ads. From, exactly, you, yeah. from you guys for people who want to sell property. And uh, and that's, it was, a, it was a great paper to get. It swelled in size from like, September the, the onwards, beginning yeah. of September, yeah, it just literally doubled or tripled, like in size and thickness, and you get the weight of it, and it was just full of new everybody. What is it that what is it that goes through people's minds to sell in September? What, it's seasonality. What, it's, why is that? Oh, uh, they think it's better. You know, you always want to sell in isolation. I think, and that's we always find selling say either in in February. When uh, schools just started back. Yeah, but also get a new pool of buyers because they've thought about over Christmas. Right. Like they think they've actually got time to sit down and talk husbands and wives and families. February and August, we always find the best times to sell because before too much comes on, you've had a, a month of no stock, so you've got pent-up demand and that slowly dwindles away. But in, it's just for some reason the birds are out, the you know the leaves are coming out on the trees. People think that you know September you know or you know into November late November is good uh, traditionally by mid November you don't want to be selling unless you have to which means if I'm a buyer I yeah, want to be yeah, buying exactly yeah uh, buy, I can sort of buy buy on uh, Christmas Eve you know or, or 15th you know from December onwards you know a lot of people see Christmas as like a deadline and then and they freak out and take a lower price which you know it's only a two week win three week window where nothing happens so you know, we, we, we actually sold, I think our agency sold about 25 properties in January this year because we started earlier but finished earlier to beat that downturn in the market. 
So, so yeah, so you you think that um, the combination of the two things, you know, and we hate seeing this happen to people, but people will become more willing as vendors, not desperate, but willing as yeah. vendors, um, when they start to see a lot more stock come onto the marketplace yeah. too, because they might start to say, "Wow, I should really sell now." Because and then that's what happens: just steamrolls. Because yeah. they, they start panicking. It's like that fear, like everyone's doing it, well, I've got to do it. Um, yeah, yeah. So you, you do get that. Um, the thing is with us, like we work it out pretty easily that why they're selling, but they never really tell you. You say, oh, by the way, I'm on 6% and I can't afford it. They don't tell the agent. No, no, no. Well, why would they? Exactly. Well, you know, uh, but you can work it out very quickly. Yeah, so like it, it's, uh, I, I got a sense that, I, I agree with you, by the way, I got a sense that if this so-called mortgage cliff becomes an incentive for vendors to meet the market, well, A, put the property in the market and meet the market uh, mentally, then it will happen around September. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, later, put it this way, I've been saying later this year. Can I ask you this, Alex? What about the sentiment, though, that some people, some economic commentators are starting to say, well, we think interest rates might start coming down in the end of this calendar year. Do you think that vendors might say, oh, shit, I'm, I'm going to hang probably on? That's why they're hanging on. Too. I'll just hang on? Yeah. Like, you've already got, like, A and Z Macquarie lowering their uh, fixed rates. Yeah. You know, so that that's a reason for them to hang on, I think. But there'll be a point where there's no more money in your bank account to pay your mortgage, so you're going to sell. But that's why I think people are hanging on. Yeah, because you know, I, I yeah, hear it all the time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, when, I bought my first place when I was, you know, 21, 20 years ago. I was paying eight percent. I, I would think the normality is where we're at at the moment. Five or six percent should be about where we're at. So it'll stay there. Yeah, I, I don't see it going back to where it was. We're going to have the same problem of you know. A, delayed inflation later down the track so you know I, I i i think over the next 10 years we'll be pretty much anywhere between four and seven percent yeah that, that sort so, of makes sense yeah but it's interesting because i read the uh and i, I don't want to say this to any vendors out there but uh, i read the um uh predictions of the uh chief economist from westpac saying that not at the end of this year but sometime in 2024 later 2024 that they expect to see seven rate reductions. Wow. Now, if I'm a vendor and I'm reading that, I'm thinking, well, I can hang on for a year because if we've got seven rate reductions, I'll be sweet. I'll be able to hang on forever. Um, how important is it? You, know, you talk to vendors all the time. You probably talk to buyers all the time, but you talk to vendors all the time. How important is it in terms of supply of properties on the marketplace? How important is confidence of the vendor that either they will get their price or alternatively um they they are will be able to hang on do you think they actually go through this process talking to yeah, the families? you know the biggest uh, pro process they go through is how they're going to get back into the market right and oh, should they sell first buy first or if i sell first i'm going to you know miss the market that's that's what also keeps drying up the stock because i go well i want to buy i want to sell but there's nothing to buy so i'm not selling so that also you know tightens up up the stock a lot but i think you know hearing about you know every economist has a different view but you know hearing about that that's yeah. only one bank by the way saying that yeah but other banks are saying three or four rate reductions at the end of this calendar year, or starting at the end yeah. of this calendar year. i don't think any of them know no. i actually don't think the reserve bank governor knows no. either by the way because no. it's all about how well yeah. inflation does or doesn't perform and and that comes down to how much we spend when you go out on a weekend and you see um, high interest rates, you know, you're very close to this and you see the big discussion about inflation. Do you ever think, is it hard to reconcile in your mind, hang on a minute, we've got really high interest rates, but everyone's out there spending like crazy. Like, uh, yeah. do, do, you ever, do you ever get a bit yeah, confused? Yeah, I do. Like, you go to, like, you go to re every restaurant's still packed. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and you go, like, is there, they must have a lot of money behind them and, you know, they're sitting on a lot of cash or they just haven't adapted that you do need to tighten up. You know, what do you think it is though i mean like because I, I can't reconcile like i, I was no, at the airport the other day i can't work oh yeah you know, i came in the airport on wednesday from from europe and i haven't never seen so many people at the airport like um and you know you know plane prices you know tickets you know double yeah i i can't work it out either i think um i, I don't know if australians because of the last 20 years how things are happening I actually know how to save maybe do you, you think know, that's what do you think we've got think so, do you yeah. think we're, do you think people out there eating into their um, yeah, credit cards or whatever yeah, yeah. or yeah, credit or, debt or, or, or debt yeah yeah, yeah. so, so well, i think therefore one thesis that comes off the back of that is that 
at some stage it'll come back to bite them and uh, and there'll be a problem yeah exactly that, and they will have to react yeah and sell and, and the, to reduce the, the debt. Prob- yeah then the biggest you know way to reduce your debt is selling your biggest asset and paying it off you know or you know paying off other debt i've often th- i've often thought to myself alex like let's say i got a two million dollar debt like that example we gave before and i bought a six million dollar property and the two million dollar debt's now costing me 180 grand a year whereas before it was costing me 60 grand a year and i think okay well i'll sell that uh six million dollar property and i'll pay back my debt um but now i've got four million or three or something million dollars tax-free because it was my home i don't just sit around doing nothing i go and buy something so is there a case to be made that if you could pick that price point in the marketplace where everybody's selling therefore those same people are probably also buying so yeah. they they downgrade yeah is that what you find yeah. they do they downgrade yeah. they go from a big house to yeah they go from 10 to 5 or 5 to 3 yeah put a mill in the bank so where's the demand then are you seeing a, a nice sweet spot in there in your marketplace a nice sweet demand area yeah it's probably now and it seesaws all the time the two and a half to four bracket then the 10 plus bracket right um, so anything over 10 is okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's not much of that anyway. Exactly. And the three, the two and a half to four bracket, a lot of it is driven by downsizers. Yeah, yeah. And families competing. So we start to see houses and, you know, semis or terraces now, both markets going for them. So it sort of keeps that marketplace pretty strong. Uh, downsizers, you know, because they're coming from an eight mil or, you know, they're going down into that market. So that's fueling it a lot. The one thing is, which is some interesting data, is our property management team, we've got 1,300 managements across all different price ranges. I was speaking to them last week and they've said they've never seen so many downsizers. I said, what do you mean by that? They said, well, people spending two and a half grand a week saying, I can't afford this anymore. We're spending Are you talking about rent or, or rental? Yeah, rent. tenants spending two and a half going down to 1,500. Right. Tenants that were in share housing, but in COVID went, no, I'm going to rent my own, you know, one bedroom or two bedroom, now going back to share housing. So they're, they're people, they're probably a bit more liquid than someone selling a house. So they're going, yep, I want to get out of this and downsize and save a thousand bucks a week. So that's that to me is, you know, a sign that will probably start to affect, you know, the sale market as well. You know, people just going, well, it's time to get out because uh, they've got a lot of debt. So yeah. you, you, you operate across a lot of the eastern part of Sydney yeah. um, and probably south of east a little yep. bit like not just not just bonroe beach i'm yeah, talking about Maribor and, yeah. Maribor and those sorts of areas um what's doing really well now uh, in terms of demand that two two and a half to four bracket yeah big you know you know you've got like i said you it's families downsizers probably also anything up to one and a half because the first home buyers grant which is finishing june 30 where you pay no stamp duty or you know annual annualized land tax that's been a big push you know, they're, they're, those properties have been, you know, they're probably up 5% this year, that one to one and a half bracket. Wow. Uh, so that they're, they're the two marketplaces that are, that are strong. And uh, are you finding much more inquiry from the investor market now? So because, I mean, normally my business, which is a financial services business, we lend money. Normally we do about 20, 30, 28 to 31% of our total volume is investor borrowers. Yeah. We're seeing a substantial increase in that in the last couple of months. So investors are coming back into the market. And one of the things we think could be driving this is obviously prices are down, um, but also yields are up because there's yeah, a yeah, shortage. It's, it's, it's a yield that's driving that, definitely. Yeah, you seen that? Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah. so you, you're seeing a much bigger inquiry for investors. Yeah. And, and investors who also buy it for families in the long term. So like I've got clients at the moment, they've got like, you know, 10 to 15 year old kids that go, okay, I'm gonna buy this terrace in paddington for two million rent it out for 10 years and give it to one of them right but so it's sort of a hybrid i'd say like so they've got they're in the market so we get a lot of that in the eastern suburbs but but you're seeing more of those people calling to getting now because i know the yields are a lot higher and again where's the sweet spot we're talking is it like the the million to two million yeah. million to three million yeah. dollar territory correct so like one of the things i'm getting out of this is um there's a sweet spot between a million and three million yeah uh, that's where the demand seems to be going yeah because of higher interest rates, investors moving to the market, good rental re- yield returns, obviously. Yeah. A, a Once you get above supply. 3 million, your rental returns aren't good, no. generally. Yes, you know. that's great. So, yeah. and uh, and uh, what I'd like to know is, um, uh, what about Darlinghurst? So, just specific, specifically, I would ask you, um, um, do you guys operate in Darlinghurst? We do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, are you, it's these areas, I mean, this is a typical investor, what you should be doing when you're an investor. 
you got to look at these areas and say, well, it's not going to bleed into the city. It's no. not going to bleed into Paddington. It's not going to bleed into King's Cross. It can't go to the airport. <laughs> Um, or water. It's not, it can't go past our hills. So to, these areas are contained. Yeah. And it just seems like there's only one way for them to go is up. Yeah, correct. Because and they're not building anymore and, you know, they're, they're transport, walk to the city, eastern suburbs. Um, you know, I, I think probably Darlinghurst has, has suffered a little bit over the last 10 years. Why, and, why do you think that is? Probably it's missing a bit of that uh, energy or a hub like Paddington or, or Surrey Hills Or has, Potts Point. Or Potts Point. But... What can happen is when those prop, you sort of get the seesaw between your suburbs. When those prices go up in those suburbs, people come back to it. Yeah, yeah. So it's sort of lagged a little bit. Um, it's you know, it, 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 I think there's a lot, lot more upside. You know, providing, uh, you know, that there's better infrastructure put in and whatnot. But you know, yeah, there's definitely upside in it. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, certainly, and that's because when you mentioned, I thought about it, when you mentioned the sweet spot between a million and three. That's sort of the. But that's every, you know, the, you know, seventy percent of the sales would yeah. be in that range. Yeah, and yeah. I, but I have seen some crazy sales. I saw Bernie do a, a sale. I think it was him. It might have been you guys. No, it was, I think it was him. He, he sold some terrace, crappy looking terrace for six and a half million or something. Yeah, it was a huge. Sure, you think it was? No, it was down here in um, Delray, Surrey. Surrey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe yeah. it. Like I mean, I, I thought someone's overpaid that. Yeah, and that's, that, yeah. We've sold one in Surrey Street a couple of years ago, and they missed out on one in Wallara, then bought there. Right. So yeah, you, know, you do get a bit of that you know, sort of going back and forth those suburbs. So what's your prediction, mate? So uh, how do you think we'll finish off 2023? I think we'll, we'll be about where we are now, price rise across all price levels or off between 2 and 5% based right. on this mortgage cliff that does have. And what do you reckon 2024? I mean, what's your prognosis for 2024? Uh, I think if rates do drop, I think that will fuel the, fuel the market straight away. But you fuel the market in terms yeah, of buyers? Yeah, and, and prices going up. Right, okay. Yeah. But... Well, you know, there's still there's a big gap between you know uh, you know wages and property prices and mortgages. So, you know, that's got to go hand in hand with you know wage growth as well in some respects. I think so. What's your biggest worry? Um, biggest worry uh, is probably that you know how much that mortgage cliff if it does happen take an effect on the market. But the thing is, for us, it, you know, as long as there's stock and it's going and up, selling. Down, doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah. For, and from a business point of view, you're yeah. going to sell no matter yeah, what. Exactly. You'll sell for yeah. somebody no matter Sometimes what. Sometimes when it doesn't sell, like we're seeing in the commercial world at the moment, like I've been speaking to guys that haven't done transactions for a year, is like no man's land. The vendors are here, buyers are here, no one knows what's happening. You know, and in the US, that's happening at the moment. Like a yeah. lot of, you know, they're, they're, there's no borrowing, there's no deals happening. No one actually knows where the prices are. So that can happen because there's, you know, because there's a big change shift either with buyers or sellers, and nothing happens for months on end. I don't think the residential market's quite quick and agile, so I don't see that happening though. You know, it's, it's very interesting. And and I, my last question to mate, given that Australia is expecting a big immigration um, push, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's what we're we're getting a big push of that at the moment. Are you? Yeah, yeah, big push. Do, do yeah. they come in with money or? Yeah, they seem like you know we sold a house in Belvey Hill. A month ago for 12 and a half, we had five bidders, four were Asians that were relocated. Wow. And they ended up buying it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and and prices, they're not that sensitive to price. No. It doesn't seem no. like because they're not borrowing very much yeah, money, exactly. if anything at all. Yeah, correct. But the population growth, we're seeing in the rentals, we're seeing, um, you know, we've got guys that have relocated from Europe that are non-residents, non-citizens. So they're paying like big taxes and stamp duties, like buying houses for ten to twenty million because they're relocating for lifestyle reasons. So that we've seen, that's definitely a, a, now the borders are open. A big shift on that. So you just made a, one quick point. I just want to ask you: How important is it to buyers for amenities like be close to schools? Your your market is schools and beaches is what we see. Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, like they're coming. If you're coming from Europe or America, you know, you're coming to Sydney because of that connection of the surf and the city. You know, so you know they, they want to see all of that. They're not they're not going you know to go live in suburbia. Or, you know, where, where you know with, with big backyards and tennis courts. I want to feel the the energy of what Sydney is. Yeah, that's and that's yeah. what Sydney is most famous for. Exactly. Yeah, Alex Phillips, PPD. Mate, thanks very much for coming on again. Um, you've uh, confirmed some things for me and you've opened the doors for me for some other things. Good. And because uh, I'm, I'm always out there looking at an investor and I was actually I was just walking around here this morning before I started these shows this morning. I spent 45 minutes walking around the area looking what's for sale and um, there's very little. Yeah, exactly. That tells me your story. Yeah. Good on you, sir. Thanks, mate. Mark. Good to see you. Good to see you.